finally got to a flop with deuces, <laughs> and I think I might fold them. Welcome back, folks. I'm going to be going over two sessions I played over at the win. Very fun, very swingy sessions. I think I played six pots over the $3,000 mark. No short of action, and I also got put in a really rough spot on the flop with bottom set. And you'll have to see if I'm able to get away from it in a set over set situation. All in all, a lot of fun sessions as well. I'm going to try something a little bit different for the next two, maybe three videos. I'm going to go faceless for the, um, the hand analysis. And comment below which one you like more. Whichever one gets more votes, I'll stick with it for a little while. But that being said, let's get straight to some hands. We're in our first orbit. We pick up pocket twos. Raise things up to 15 and hijack to my left three bets to 50. Pulls back to me. I'm going to make the call. I always do with pocket pairs. And what do you know, we flop a set. Very first hand, 5-3 deuce, 2 clubs. I check it over, and my opponent now fires out a half pot bet of 50. Really deep. The support is definitely going to be better for me, and I'm going to be bluffing at this pretty heavily, so might as well have some uh, good hands in there as well. I check raise up to $200. My opponent doesn't think for too long and makes the call. Go to the turn, which isn't my favorite. It's a queen of clubs. It might slow her down. Just because, you know, some of my bluffs do get there, but I'm going to keep firing. We're looking about 2.5 SPR, so we want to go around 70% here. I fire up for 350, and I'm not think for too long, and then ships it all in. A little bit gross, but if she had a flush, I don't think she played this way. Pocket Queens kind of sucks, but nothing to do here. I make the call. We go to the river, hoping for no club. It is the... Six of diamonds, really nice safe river. I show, and we are good. Doubling up in about five minutes from when I sit down. On to the next hand. Under the gun has raised to 20, a solid reg. I think he plays 510. Hijack has called, and I've got ace king offsuit in the cutoff. I three bet to 85, falls back round, and my opponent's in the tank. And then comes up with a four bet to $270. Uh, this is really big, and. I'm just going to trap here and play in position. I don't think he has it. Over 3x in, out of position. I don't know, something about this just tells me he's bluffing. I think he would size down a bit with his nice hands, and we got a really good hand to play in position here. So I toss in the call, and we go to a really good flop of ace, eight, six, two spades, one club. Uh, this is not a range bet flop for my opponent, right? The eight and the six are kind of middling, so in between nine and six, it's not that great. I'm going to have a lot more hands that squeeze here that are going to connect with this board, so... I expect to see him do quite a bit of che uh, checking here, but he does fire out for a small bet of 125. Raising's definitely not out of the question, but I'm just going to go ahead and keep trapping because I, I think he's just full of it here. So I make the call. We're off to the turn, which is the five of spades. Carl is going to be way better for me than him because the ace of spades is out there. It's going to reduce his flush combos by a ton. I'm going to have way more flushes, way more straights, way more sets than he is. So the board's getting really dicey for him. So when he checks it over, I want to get it all in here by the river, and SPR is looking around 1, so I want to bet around 40% here. I think I sized down a little bit too much to... Oh no, 350. I nailed it. Beautiful, I love that sizing. So I fire up for 350. My opponent makes the call. Off to the river. It is the 7 of clubs, a card that can be way better for me than my opponent. But now my opponent's in the tank. And he's tanking for a couple minutes. And then goes for the lead. $700 all in here. Um, this is just terrible from his point. It's gone from me getting stacked with all my bluffs when he has value to now all of his bluffs get stacked, which is like the dream situation. All right, if I had a bluff here, I just fold. And, but now I am in a pickle with Ace King. I'm going to have a lot better hands here. I'm going to have so many flushes, so many straights, so many two pairs, so many sets that my opponent just isn't going to have. And he's repping like. King 9 suited, Ace 4 suited, or Pocket Kings with the King of Spades. So there's two combos of Pocket Kings with the King of Spades and two combos of Ace 4 of Clubs. I guess there are a couple King 9 suited in there, but how likely are those to float the turn? Not very likely. Um, except for maybe King 9 of Spades exactly, and yeah, that's it. So we're getting a really good price. My opponent's made a pretty big mistake here by leading, because I was going to shove anyways. This card just doesn't really hit him, so it's not that big of a mistake if we call him or no good. So I toss in the call, and my opponent shows the ace-four of clubs. 
yeah, that one's gonna be rough for us. Easy come, easy go. On to the next hand. This next hand, under the gun has raised to 15 and gone three callers. We look down at King Jack, obviously, in the small blind, and this is a very, very low frequency squeeze. But the undergun player is a little bit on the passive side, so I decide to go for it and I raise it up to 110. Big blind gets out the way, under the gun calls, one fold, hijack also makes a call and cutoff gets out the way. So we're going three ways to a flop, which comes on kind of nice. It's queen, queen, six, two diamonds. We do have the king of diamonds, so we can definitely rep some hands, as well as there's going to be a lot of turns we can keep barreling on. So, for all those reasons, I fire out for $75, does not have to be big. The pot is already massive. So, um... Under the gun now calls and hijack gets out the way. Looking for some help on the turn, we kind of get it in the nine of spades. Just with the speed my opponent called, I don't really think he's got a queen, and if he does, we're probably just going to get stacked this hand. I look over to stack, it looks like he's got about $1,000, so I miscounted a little bit. So about 2 SPR, we want to go slightly over half pot, like 60%. So I fire up for 275, sizing up for the river shove. But... It is not needed, my opponent releases his hand, and we take down a pretty nice pot there with King High. We have moved from the must move table to the must stay table. The under the gun plus two players raise it up to 15, Hijack has called, and I look down at pocket, kings in the small blind. If I'm squeezing King Jack off, I'm definitely squeezing King King. So, I raise it up to $80, big blind folds, under the gun makes a call, and Hijack gets out the way. We go to a really gross flop of 765, two spades, one club. Uh, I'm just going to check everything here. So I check it over. My opponent fires out for 100. Not going anywhere right now with an over pair. I make the call. We're off to the turn, which is the deuce of hearts. Uh, pretty nice card. Nothing really gets there. So I check it over. My opponent fires out one more time for $280. Really sizable bet here. We're going to have to call at least one more and see what happens on the river. I toss in the call, and the river is the six of diamonds. A really nice card. If he somehow had 7-5 suited, we now beat that, but <laughs> that's pretty unlikely. Uh, but it does reduce the combos of 7-6 suited, 6-5 suited, and pocket 6s. So, I check it over, and my opponent doesn't think for too long and fires out a pot size bet of 935. That's really impressive. It took him like 30 seconds to figure out how much the pot was. It takes me <laughs> minutes. <laughs> but he knows exactly the pot size. That is impressive. On this river, I think we are going to have to call down here. Kind of sucks, but he is a 5'10 player, so he's going to have some bluffs in his range. I don't run out like this. I don't know. I don't know. I toss in the call, and we get shown the bad news in the pocket fives. All of our profits are gone. We reload for another thousand something, and we are back to battle. This hand features two opponents we've already played. Uh, under the gun is raised to 15, she's the lady that we stacked with pocket 2s, and I 3-bet her with the ace 5 suited up to $50. Now the player who stacked me with ace 4 suited, cold 4 bets to 160. Folds back around to me, and once again, this is this large bluffy sizing, I don't believe it. Uh, we are a little bit short to start the hand, only 1200, I didn't top off fully. But, it's, this is over 3x in position, I don't believe this at all, so I'm going to throw in the 5-bet bluff. I don't want to ship it all in, as I think it just gives him a chance to call with a hand like, I don't know, nines or whatever, or ace-queen. So I'm going to go a sizing that I would use with aces and kings. I go for the 5 bet up to $300, about 1.8x out of position, and this is also exactly 25% of my stack. He thinks for a while, and first this size he's not going to fold anything, even though you actually should fold a few hands here, but he makes a call and we go to a flop. Jack, seven, deuce, two diamonds, one spade. Nothing for us, but unless he's got pocket jacks or aces, how is he really going to hold on here? I fire out, and it does not need to be big. $100 here, one-sixth pot, and my opponent pretty quickly makes the call. Off to the turn, which is the three of clubs. We do pick up a gut shot now, so there's a little bit of hope. SPR is around one, so we're going to want to bet. I think it's around 33 to 40% here. I can't remember, but really, really, really small. I want to go for three streets here. So I fire out for about 33%, $250, and my opponent doesn't seem to love it. He's tanking a bit, tanking a bit. I'm kind of worried I'm running into aces here, but no harm done. My opponent releases his hand, and we get this ace-high 5-bet bluff through. We pick up king-queen offsuit and raise things up to $15. Only the button makes a call, so we're going heads up to a flop of 8-7-deuce, 2 spades, 
Uh, board I'm going to want to check pretty frequently. King Queen definitely in there. So I check it over. My opponent fires out for 20. Round half paw. We should probably just let this go. But two overs. Backdoor flush draw. Mm -hmm. I toss in the call. We go to a turn, which is the seven of diamonds. The card is going to be way better for me than my opponent. I check it over and surprisingly bets out for $30. And this feels weak. This feels like a bet to get to showdown. It's also a really bad card for him. I'm going to have a lot of trips here. So... I decide to turn my hand into a bluff and raise it up to 120. My opponent doesn't think for too, too long, and then makes the call. Off to the river, which is the nine of clubs. No help to me. And yeah, I still think he's really weak here. I think maybe he's gone eight. Maybe eight, nine, but that's it. I just don't see him having a very strong hand here. So I fire out a very large bet of 315 and put my opponent to the test. Now, my opponent does not love it. He's in the tank for a while, thinking it over, thinking it over. A good minute or two goes by. Finally, my opponent decides on a call. King-Queen is no good, and my opponent rolls over the pocket sixes. Oh, oh dear. I knew he was weak, but I did not know that he was going to make a hero call like that. Very nice by my opponent. Okay, we were playing against the exact same opponent. This is... Maybe a few orbits later, but middle position raised to 20. I 3-bet pocket queens up to $80 here. And now my opponent puts in the cold 4-bet, but it's only to 180. Uh, folds back around, middle position makes a fold, and if this was like 3x, I would just muck this against this opponent. But versus this sizing, we can easily set mine here. And we might... We're not we're never good here, but we can set mine. I toss in the call, and we go to a flop of king queen six rainbow a little bit sketchy a little bit sketchy but aces are more common than kings here since there is a king out there so feeling all right and if he's got kings we're getting stacked i check it over my opponent fires out a bet of 115 uh raising is a little bit crazy we're just gonna blow him off i don't think we're gonna blow him off but i just toss in the call and set the trap we go to a turn which is okay it's a king of hearts which makes me feel really good about my hand. I've essentially got the nuts now. He's only got one common kings left, but it's going to slow down pocket aces, which is unfortunate. So I check it over, and my opponent does check it back. We're going to river. Please, no ace. It is the four of diamonds. Beautiful. And if my opponent's not folding pocket sixes, I don't think he's folding pocket aces, so I go for it. 2x over bet, all in on the river, and my opponent immediately groans. And takes about 10 seconds and then flicks in the call. I show and it is good. We are finally back to even. A little bit in the profit zone. Let's see if we can keep it going. We are looking down at two limbs and I have ace jack offsuit in the big blind. I raise things up to $35 and both my opponents make the call. Three ways to a flop of queen, four, deuce, two clubs. I'm going to start with a bet here. I do some back doors and an over. So I bet 35 Under the gun makes the call and low jack gets out the way. Off to the turn, which is the eight of clubs. Really nice now. We can definitely rep the flush. Look over to stack. A little bit over two SPR, so about 60% is what we're... 60, 70% is what we're going to want to go. I fire out for 110, and my opponent makes the call. Off to the river, which is the queen of diamonds. Not my favorite card, but... I don't know. If he's got a queen, he's going to... He's going to call, but... I think... Even without the trips, he would still call the queen. So I kind of like this as it makes it a little bit less likely. So I decide to go for this bluff. I don't think it's going to work very often, but I'm just going to go for it. I fire out all in. And to my surprise, my opponent actually folds. Really nice to pick that one up, even though it's not a huge pot by any means. This is my final hand. I have my racks in hand. They're ready to go. And I pick up ace jack suited on the gun. This might be a disaster. I raise things up to $15, and the player that I stacked when I had pocket queens now three bets me to 60. It's a little bit on the large side, but my opponent is quite tilted. And I think that's why he's using these larger sizes, but I toss in the call. We're going to a flop of king, jack, six, two diamonds, one spade. Check it over, my opponent fires out a bet of 60. Raising is silly. Folding is also silly, so that leaves one option. I make the call, and we're off to a turn. Turn is beautiful. The jack of spades. We're either going to win a lot of money or lose a lot this hand. I check it over, and my opponent once again fires out for 110. Um, 
Yeah, this is a card that's going to be a lot better for me, especially since he bet half pot on the flop. So I'm going to raise this up right away. Just like I did when the 7 paired and I was bluffing, I make it 350 to go. My opponent really quickly makes a call. Looking for a safe river, it is the 8 of hearts, as safe as it gets. My opponent's got about 1 SPR, I should have sized my raise a little bit bigger on the turn, just to set up a better sized pot, a better sized river shove, but I'm really bad at calculating SPR with, with raises. Anyways, he's got pot behind, I fire all in and put my opponent once again in the tank. He's thinking it over, and I really think he's going to call here. It really feels like a call. My opponent thinks it over a bit. And actually ends up making the correct fold. Very nice lay down by my opponent, but we're going to book a pretty sizable comeback win on this session. It's a new day, a new session, and I've been again absolutely wrecked today. Uh, I've just moved from the must move to the must stay game, and the under the gun straddle is live. We are playing 2 5 10 for a little bit of this. I raise up the ace jack of hearts. Funny, I just ended the session on ace jack of hearts, and now we're starting this one with ace jack of hearts. Raise up to $25. And we got small blind, the big blind, and the straddle to call. Four ways to a flop of ace, ten, six, rainbow. Checks to me, and you could bet, you could check, doesn't matter. I think both are good, so I decide to check it back this time. Have some strong hands in my check back range. Turn is the eight of spades. Small blind now just picks up a stack of chips and fires into the middle. $65. Big blind folds, under the gun folds, and nothing to do here but call. Off to the river, which is the four of spades. Opponent now checks it over, and I think it's pretty clear we got the best hand here. How much value can we get, though? I don't know. But I have been showing a lot of bluffs. And maybe my opponent will think I'm bluffing. So I fire up for 200, and I get snap called. I'm about to show my hand, and then my opponent rolls over. Ace King. Uh... <laughs> Whoops. So I've topped off my stack, I'm now in for $2,500, cut off his raise to 20 and I re-raise up to 65 Falls back round and I do get some action, so we're going heads up to a flop of queen a3, another set of queens. Opponent checks it over and just having this board so locked up, I'm just going to check back and play some turns. Turn is really nice, it's the ace of spades, a card that I'm definitely going to start bluffing on if I did have bluffs. So cut off checks and I now fire out for 45 Opponent makes a quick call and roffs the river which is really nice, another ace. My opponent checks it over and I just don't think he's gonna fold a hand like ace jack to almost any size. So I size way up here, almost three X pot to $600. Unfortunately, my opponent does not have an ace and makes a pretty quick fold, but that's all right. We're chipping up a little bit here, getting back to even. Picking up pocket nines in the low jack, I raise it $25 over a limp. We get the button calls, and now small blind puts in the squeeze to 110. He's been doing this a lot in the small blind. Big blind folds, middle position folds. I randomized 25% four bet here, but it landed on call. So I just toss in the call and button comes along. Go to an interesting flop. It's jack 10, eight, two spades. So we flop pretty bad pair, but an open ender. But our open ender is pretty gross. <laughs> like a queen is not good for us. So we don't have that many outs. Small blind checks, I'm just going to check this back, and button also checks. We go to an okay turn, it is the eight of diamonds. Small blind now checks once again, and I'm going to start betting for protection here. <clears throat> button might have a pocket pair like fives or sixes that it's going to fold, but we want to deny equity from small blinds ace highs. So I fire up for 150, and now button snap shoves all in. Small blind gets out the way, and this is kind of gross. Like on one hand, we have maybe 10 outs if we're behind. We are getting a decent price, you know, 600 to call into 1800. So like 33%, but we've only got maybe 20% equity here. If that. And I just don't see too many bluffs here. That will check back the flop. I think he's most likely got a hand like 8-7 suited. That seems about right. Which means our 7's not even good, so we've only got 6 outs. Ugh. Yeah, it doesn't feel great, but after a little bit of tanking... Just decide to fold it. My opponent is nice enough to show us the nine of diamonds. Um, unless he has ace nine of diamonds exactly. We're just not winning this hand. <laughs> uh, nice hand. On the gun has raised to 20. Middle position has called. And now the old gentleman to my right has raised up to 60. I know what you're thinking. How is this a hand? But 
I'm a little bit crazy and I go ahead and cold four bet an older gentleman to $150 with the Jack 10 suited in position. Folds back around to him and he pretty quickly makes a call. Um, I'm already in the weeds. <laughs> we go to a flop, which is way above average. Jack eight, seven, one heart. So we do the backdoor flush draw, the gut shot and the top pair. He checks it over and this is definitely a board I'm going to check 100% doesn't have to be 100%. I could actually probably get behind a bet here if I had aces, but with this hand specifically, we're just going to value on ourselves when we bet. So I check it back. We go to a nice turn, which is the five of clubs, which doesn't change much. He now checks it over once again, and I'm going to want to start betting for protection here, just in case you got a hand like ace, queen, ace, king, something like that, or maybe like a hand like pocket nines or something. So I fire up for 175 here, about half pot. My opponent makes a call, planning to check back almost every river. Over the river is the jack of clubs. My opponent checks it over once again. And I just don't see him being too strong here. Maybe an ace high. Maybe a hand like pocket tens, pocket nine, something like that. So I don't want to size up too big and let him get off the hook. I fire out a bet of $350 and we get snap called. Oh boy, I show my hand and it is good against the pocket queens. Yeah, why am I four betting these guys? That is... <laughs> suicide but it works out this time and we do pick up a pretty nice pot and this is gonna get us slightly above even for the day so in this hand i'm actually up around 600 dollars, and i only need to win 800 dollars to be halfway done the 50k out of 100k challenge so pretty notable hand here as well i've had pocket twos four times before this session and all four times i raised it up pre-flop and i did not get to a flop pretty frustrating because i'm really good at flopping sets but this time we are going to get to a flop. I raise the pocket twos up to $30 over two limps. And we get the big blind, under the gun, and low jack to make the call. So we're going four ways to a flop. And look at that. We flop bottom set on 6-5-2. Really nice here. Big blind checks it over. And now the original limper leads out for $50. Love it. We are definitely raising this guy. However, low jack does a raising for us and makes it $125. Now I'm getting a little bit concerned. These are two limpers showing a lot of strength on 6-5-2. I'm just going to call here. I think putting the raise would be a little bit over of an overplay. Big blind out gets out the way. Another gun thinks about it for a little bit. And then ships it all in. Oh boy. <laughs> Lojack now gets out the way after a slight tank. Now it's back on me. So first I thought, what is low jack raising there? Definitely not a draw. So he could have some kind of like 6-5 suited type hand that got out of there, which is blocking a lot. He could also have like a 5-4 suited hand. Or a 7-8, I don't know, something like that. Or maybe like pocket 7s or 8s. All in all, I'm just not going to put too much of my uh, thought process into his removal there. But now under the gun is now shipping all in. After he's been raised, the original raiser has called. And so I start thinking about what hands he could have. He's never going to limp 3-4 suited. So the straight is out of there. Is he going to have a hand like 7-8 of hearts? I think he'd raise that pre-flop. Um, and I just don't think he'd go too crazy with it. He can just call and close action. So I start going through all the hands he could have. And you know, just that open limp is just always small pocket pairs. And I lose to fives and sixes. This sucks. <laughs> this really, really sucks. But I think it over. I think it over. And I just don't see any way that I have more than one out here. I just don't see it. So I make a really, really tight fold. I chuck my pocket twos in the muck. And my opponent is nice enough to show... The five of diamonds. We got away from set over set. I cannot tell you that it is such a good feeling. <laughs> Even though it wasn't going to be a huge pot or anything, like not a huge mistake to call, it is still really nice to be able to get away from that. We are playing our last orbit before I head off for dinner. Uh, we're looking at two limps and a very, very good 2-5 reg has raised up to $30 in the cutoff. A small blind has called and I'm going to squeeze the ace king suited up to 150 both the limpers fold, cutoff makes a quick call, and small blind gets out the way. Heads up to a flop of jack-six-three rainbow. 
into the backdoor flush draw, and it's going to be a really tough board for him to continue on without a hand like Bock of Jacks. So I fire out for $80, quarter pot. My opponent makes the call. We head to the turn, which is beautiful. The ace of diamonds, we make top pair, top kicker. And sometimes I do want to have some very strong hands in my check back range. And I think the ace king is going to be in there. Not, not too often, but sometimes. I prefer having a hand like ace jack in my check back range. But anyways, ace king is going to the check this time. I check it over and my opponent fires out for 300. A uh, little bit dicey here, but... Still have Ace King, we're still beating even some value hands, so I toss in the call, Ruffs the River, which is not my favorite, it's a 9 of Diamonds. I check it over, my opponent goes in the tank for quite a while, and I'm really hoping he checks this one back. Fortunately, no such luck, my opponent moves all in, slight over bet, and now we're in a spot. I immediately say, I think I'm going to make another big fold. Make another big fold. It's just not a great spot. It just doesn't feel good. Something feels off. Something's feeling off. Uh, it's hard for him to have bluffs here, you know. He'd have to be pretty creative to turn a jack into a bluff or pocket tens with a diamond, something like that, which he is definitely capable of. But, you know, searching for those bluffs on the turn to get there on the river to plan ahead is really tough. And for value, my opponent's got so much, you know. He's got ace jack. He has pocket jacks, pocket sixes and threes at a low frequency. And then flushes. Because I only bet quarter pot on the flop, so he does have to float a lot of, like, king, queen of diamonds. 10 eight of diamonds, 10 nine of diamonds, uh, 10 nine of diamonds doesn't exist. But those kind of hands do have to float the flop to a quarter pot bet. Uh, yeah. I was really close to folding this in the first minute, and then I just couldn't find the fold button. And I talked myself into a call. Just remember him bluffing me in a big pot before. I go for it. I toss in the call. We got shown the bad news in the pocket threes. Ah, <laughs> that one is not going to go our way. We're going to lose. I think it's the biggest pot I've ever lost. Just over $4,000. Not going our way. We're going to book a pretty sizable loss this session. That is okay. What a couple of sessions. Those were some very tough hands. A lot of really gross decisions. And to be honest, I'm actually kind of excited to leave Vegas in five days and play some softer competition let's say these two five games are no joke over here in vegas uh but between the two sessions i was in both of them for 2500 the first session i was out for 3895 for a small win and the second session i was out for only 630 dollars we're gonna book a loss this vlog but we are only two thousand dollars now away from halfway so hopefully the next video or two we will get there thank you guys so much for watching by the way if you're really enjoying the overall better editing and all that it is taking a ton of time out of my day so i would really appreciate it if you guys could drop a like in the comments below not in the comments just drop a like down there it seriously helps out the video it's like two to three times the amount of subscribers i normally get when i do ask for likes so that really helps thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys all in the next episode